Several cities, including Carlsbad, Oceanside, Solana Beach, Vista, and Poway, have already voted to ban e-cigarettes from areas where cigarettes are banned. The city of San Diego has yet to take a position on the matter. So here to give us some of the arguments about this latest public health debate, we have Jeff Steyer, who is a senior fellow at the National Center for Public Policy Research in Washington, D.C., and heads its risk analysis division. Also, we have Dr. John Pierce. He is with UC San Diego's Moore's Cancer Center. He's also the recipient of the 2013 American Association for Cancer Research Award for Outstanding Achievement in Cancer Prevention Research. Thank you both gentlemen for joining us. So Jeff, let me start with you. You have opposed banning or even some regulation of e-cigarettes. Why? Well, I'm in favor of regulation. I think we ought to ban the sales to minors. I think we ought to make sure that there's no marketing and there isn't any right now to minors and have product safety regulations. But some of the reckless uh, regulations that, are, that have been proposed and are now in place in places like Los Angeles, these bans on use in public places actually can have serious unintended consequences. We may not have all of the evidence about e-cigarettes. We have a lot of evidence about the dangers of smoking, and we know cigarette smokers are quitting smoking and switching to e-cigarettes, so why would we make it harder for them to quit? Remind us what the difference is between e-cigarettes and normal cigarettes. Well, there's a huge difference. I don't like the name e-cigarettes because they're not cigarettes. The main difference is that cigarettes are dangerous because you're burning and inhaling tobacco. The nicotine that you get from e-cigarettes is addictive, but it's not particularly harmful, not much more harmful than the caffeine in a cup of coffee. We associate nicotine with being very dangerous because usually we get our nicotine from cigarettes. Wouldn't it be great if we found a way to give addicted smokers the nicotine they want without all the bad stuff. So John, Jeff is claiming that in fact uh, e-cigarettes are helping people quit real cigarettes. Uh, what does the latest research say about that? There's just no evidence for it. Uh, the, the, there's, there's lots of anecdotal stories uh, that many of them uh, can be drummed up by different people, but it, there's the research, independent research for, away from the, uh, the e-cigarette companies uh, is in the field at the moment. Uh, it will be with us within the next two years. And the early look I've seen on it is, is that it doesn't do as well as um, a nicotine patch, for example, for, for helping people to quit. Uh, and, and there are not many people who, who can convert to it and stay with it. But, but that's our point. My point is not that. The, the, the question on the regulation mm. has to do with clean indoor air. Uh, and the vaping they put out uh, is is heavily uh, uh, has a lot of products in it. It has uh, particulate matter less than 2.5, which is particular danger, particularly dangerous. It's over three times the recommended standard in in a room, uh, a well ventilated room with people vaping. And it also has uh, exhaled nitrous oxide, which is the marker now for asthma. So we would expect that asthmatics, as someone who's got a uh, is either an asthmatic or has had a tendency to that, could be seriously affected by this as well. So now what about this new element that we've just been hearing in the news about the liquid um, nicotine, which is actually causing um, problems with poisoning kids? So we had 100 calls in the first two weeks of, 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 of January this year uh, on kids less than five, uh, mainly ingesting uh, uh, these, this liquid. Uh, in, in some form. Now, I, I think a number of them were inhaling. Uh, uh, the that a number of them were inhaling. It, it actually says it in the article, uh, inhaling. But they also uh, got it in their eyes and on their skin. Uh, and so there was. Uh, and th these are calls for, uh, for from providers asking for help in how to handle this problem. Okay, now Jeff, I want to give you a chance because the thing about the liquid nicotine is that sometimes it's given cherry flavor, bubble well, gum flavor. It's attractive to kids. Well, a couple points on that. We them? ought to have regulation in place right away that makes sure there's product standards so it doesn't come out, that people aren't dropping it and kids aren't having it. Of course we ought to have that, but you know, my friend John here sounds as if he's cheerleading against e-cigarettes even working. The reason e-cigarettes help so many people quit smoking and you can walk around denying it is because the flavors attract adult smokers. Because you don't want tobacco flavored e-cigarettes, that's not a very good flavor. Many cigarette smokers who have quit are saying, you know, it's because of the cherry flavor that I'm able to get off of, of the tobacco burning that I get out of e-cigarettes. And these people are feeling better. So okay. these are the real public health heroes, the people okay. who quit smoking. This
Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but okay. I know that um, the tobacco industry is, is promoting this new product also. So well, they see it as a threat to their business, so they ought to. Okay. So people are quitting smoking. Th this is not the case. So this is a pretty hot argument. I know it's one of the most significant public health threats that we're currently facing. So thank you so much for weighing in. I'd like to thank my guests, Jeff Steyer, a senior fellow at the National Center for Public Policy Research in Washington, and Dr. John Pierce with UCSD Moore's Cancer Center. Thank you so much. Thank you.